and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. So today, okay, what are we doing today? I don't know, wait, let me think. Today we're gonna do looping, looping, looping. So I already done like three different, four different videos about push to and performance and how to use it and how to start looping. And there's just so many different ways to do it in different purposes. So there's production purposes that so you can do looping in a session view. There is for performance. There's, oh, there's just so many different ways. So after doing those videos, I got a couple questions about looping in more detail, like how to actually do it from start to beginning all the details, all the settings, how to get it work. So this video is basically comprehensive video information about looping, how to get it work, any troubleshooting you might need to do to kind of get it work the way that you want it. I'm gonna talk through the basic setup and some basic issues that you might have. So the first type of way of doing live looping is just having an audio track, activating the track from the bottom of the track, uh, the activation button thing, red. You make sure that the monitoring of the track is off so that it doesn't feed back. Then you make sure that the uh, channel that I have the microphone in, so channel one, uh, will be rooted to the track. When you press session view on push to, the buttons will get pink and that means that that channel is activated. So example, right now I have four and that means that all of them are recording able and I can loop to them. I can loop to them. So when you are looping on a stage and you're using this method of looping, there can be a couple problems. So example, you have other samples on the track, you, you launch them, they are playing, and then you start recording, but it doesn't start exactly when you want it to, and it starts a little bit later, or it starts like slightly after, or there's a half a bar later. So that is to do with the global quantization, quant quantization, quantization uh, settings. So you need to go to your preferences and from there, uh, make sure that the exclusive button is turned off and then default launch mode is as toggle. So toggle means that when you click it, you wanna just turn it on and off really easily instead of turning it off by clicking under it or you know changing a scene. And then the most important one is default launch quantization. Quantization, I don't know how to say that. Put that on global. So another important quantization setup is on the session view. Example, if you are triggering the clip but it starts later, then you might have your quantization settings as one bar or two bars. So if you put that quantization set up as example one slash 32 that means that the time between lounge and the quantization of the actual loop to the to the whole rhythm of the whole song will be much smaller if you have a problem with the launching try to put one slash 32. yes so sometimes when you're performing the vocal can be quite quiet or there can be a lot of feedback from the speakers because you're on a stage. A couple of tips for that is that on the audio channel where you're looping, you can put a gate and on the gate, you just make sure that the threshold is low enough so that the audio coming into that channel will be going over the threshold of the gate. So just make sure that you test it before with the gate so that it doesn't cut off in an awkward place. And then you can put compressor on that channel as well to compress the sound when it goes to the channel so it will become a little bit louder and a little bit like better sounding and you can example also put some effects like reverb on the channel as well to make it sound a bit cooler. Another way to loop on the stage is using a looper plugin. So you can go to audio effects and then uh, you go to find a plugin called looper. And when you're using looper, just put the monitor in. So what you can do is to minimap the controllers of the looper into your push on Ableton Live, you will press MIDI, the top right corner, and then everything turns blue. 
What you need to do is that on push two, you go to press user. So you will click play button and then select a button on push that you want to mini map it to. Do the same thing to play, stop, undo and clear. Those are the most important buttons that you will need when starting to loop with Looper. So when you want to start recording, you will press record, start singing or playing. No. When you're done, you press play. Then if you want a overdub on, on the top of that, you want to make another layer of vocal example, vocal harmony, you press record again. No. An example, a chorus comes and you don't want the harmonies there, you can press undo or clear. No, 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 no. So undo, you will take the reason away, will strip it back to what, where it was, or when you press clear, it will just remove everything. So these two techniques are the most simple ways to actually loop with Ableton Live. So there's also other ways to do it that are a bit more complex and a bit more pro things. And I'm gonna make another video of those in one point. Just remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will see when I post other videos. So there will be more push to stuff coming up. There will be more about looping and performance. And let me know down in the comments if you wanna see something certain or you have any questions about anything, because that indicates me that what you guys want to see okay so please subscribe and yeah have a nice day and i'll see you later